Dave is at here, and I am just getting the recording started, and we have a couple of people who are still logging on, so we'll just wait a moment or two. So for those of you who are here, welcome, and uh, get yourselves comfortable. Feel free to grab a piece of uh, paper and a pen so you can take some notes along the way. Uh, grab yourself a coffee or a tea or whatever is going to work best for you, and we will get rolling in just a moment or two. All right, gang. So I think that we are online here. Uh, can you do me a favor? Uh, can you let me know just by typing in the little questions uh, area? Can you make sure that number one, you can hear me and that number two, you can see my screen and we just want to make sure that technology is on our side for this process. Hello, hello, want to make sure we're working fine. There we go, you can see in here. There we go, there we go, there we go. There's a little pause between here and Australia, I believe. Okay, so uh, do me a favor, gang. Uh, let me know where in, uh, I, because I, I think most of the people that we have with us this evening are, well, I guess it's this afternoon. Uh, let me know where you're from in Australia and what time it is. Fill me in a little bit. We, it is, uh, I am coming at you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It is now 9 p.m. on Sunday evening, and uh, just so you know, uh, so some some from Saskatoon, fantastic, same time as you. That makes it a little bit easier. And uh, in New S NSW, so I think that's New South Wales. It is 1 p.m. Monday. It is yes, I I know we're a day away. I, I'm I've got my flights booked, and I'm losing a day on the way there, which. Um, I, you know, often lobby God to gain a day, not lose a day. So <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so here's the scoop gang. We are going to spend approximately 60 minutes. I will hang out for a little bit for Q&A. Uh, uh, it is booked for 90 minutes. I'll do my best to answer all of your questions. And what I'm going to share with you uh, is pretty simple and straightforward this evening uh, or this afternoon, depending upon where, um, is creating breakthroughs. Three simply and profound strategies that immediately bring you more time, money, love, and happiness. And we are going to be talking about the three-day transformational program, The Gift, and uh, the fact that The Gift is coming to Australia. When when you say New South Wales, what I'm going to guess is that closest to Melbourne or Brisbane? Okay, I've got to learn to say that properly. Melbourne or Brisbane? Brisbane. Um, I, I'm, I am curious for those of you who are from there, let me know. Okay, so I'm going to hustle through this. I think many of you know a little bit about me. That is uh, me. Um, and the stand of the creator's code is, is pretty simple and clear. What we do is this. This is our courses, our programs, our workshops, light fire to your dreams, inspire you to action, and support you to be a conscious creator. And what that really means in a nutshell is uh, it's about you creating what's most important in your life. It is about you getting out of your own way. It is about you transcending what, was, what is possible for you, all of those pieces. So what I want you to recognize and to understand is that my role tonight is to uh, literally educate you so you know what uh, what we do, invite you to, to participate in the gift, answer all of your questions. So if you have a question throughout any of this process, feel free just to type it in. Um, I can at the end, potentially, uh, depending timing wise, I can unmute you and you can actually just pose a question verbally and I'm happy to answer that. Whatever's going to work best for you. Now, a couple of things about this. Um, I have a gift for you right out of the gate, which is if you go to my blog, which is jfazette.com, and on the little right-hand side there, there is a little opt-in box. And if you do so, we will uh, send you a 12-week course. It has a couple little videos, has a couple little assignments. It will get you a uh, complimentary download of my book, Reframe Your Lane, which is a best-selling book here in Canada. And the truth of the matter is this, for any of you who are diligently working on keeping yourself motivated, inspired, building your business on track, moving and shaking, is that any of you say, hell yeah, if that applies to you? Um, this book is a powerful tool and resource to keep yourself on track, particularly when things are not going your way, particularly when uh, you know things perhaps get a little bit tough, all of those pieces. 
It's a really good book. Uh, don't take my word for it. Jack Canfield said, Reframe Your Blames, a step-by-step -step guide that will help you to apply the first and most important success principle. Take 100% responsibility for your life. This book will raise your vibration, clarify your mission, and support you to genuine personal accountability. Uh, Brian Tracy said, This powerful, practical book shows you how to liberate yourself from perhaps the greatest of all burdens to success. So bottom line is this, it is a great resource, whether you do anything with us or not, and frankly, you should. Um, that book, get it, read it, do the exercises, do the activities, it will change your life. Now, on the note of the gift, uh, quick question for those of you, and this, by the way, is whether you're from Oz or whether you are from here, um, how many of you are already registered for the gift? You're just checking in to find out more about what the heck it is, how it works, what you're going to get out of it. So let me know, uh, yes or yes, I am already registered for the gift, and then uh, that will let me know who is not and who's still trying to find out about it and see if it's a fit. All right. So here's the thing. Our entire purpose is to break through the limitations, break through the barriers, break through the, the unconscious and invisible blocks that hold us back and get in our way from creating what it is that we want in our lives. That is the aim. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, the types of breakthroughs that people come and participate in the gift and people work with us at the Creators Code for um, are very, very broad. Now, make more money is... Um, obviously an important breakthrough for most entrepreneurs. I mean, we didn't get into business as a hobby. We didn't get into business because we wanted it to cost us money. We got into business because we wanted to earn more money, but often is easier said than done. But it's much broader than that in terms of what we work on and how we actually go about this process. So we actually just back up. I, I'm going to ask you to, if making more money is part of your goal or your objective or what you're working on currently, I want you to say yes. Just, so just type yes into the little uh, into the little chat box there. And by the way, these processes are intended to be uh, interactive conversations, all of those pieces. So type interact, let me know what's going on so I know what's happening for you. So make more money, resolve conflict in relationships, increase sustainable success. And what I mean by that is many of you, um, succeed in one area of your life at the expense of others. So honest God, I mean, let's be frank about this. It isn't that difficult to make more money, but it is you know, for most of us a little bit more difficult to make more money and still maintain time with the kids, still maintain time for self-care, still show up at everybody's birthday, still do all of the things. So sometimes it can be a little bit challenging in that manner. Um, and here's just a whole bunch of other things that we get breakthroughs, risk, disapproval, saying no, getting and staying motivated. We're going to talk about uh, our motivation structure and how that applies. Uh, following your dreams, find and commit to the one, if any of you are in that process. These are consistent areas of feedback that we have heard over the past 25 years of delivering this course and program uh, to over 40,000 graduates. Okay, so I want you to recognize and realize this is not our first canoe trip. Uh, we didn't just fall into this because like, ooh, personal development is a good thing. Um, this is what I have dedicated my life to. This is what our organization does better, I believe, than frankly anyone else on planet Earth. Um, so these are the kinds of breakthroughs. So here's what I would ask you to do is this, is if you had a magic wand and you could tap yourself with that magic wand and you could instantaneously have a breakthrough, I'm going to ask you to type it in the little chat window there about what that breakthrough is that you would want. You, you know, got one wish. What would it be? And by the way, it might be something on this list. It might be something radically and dramatically different. That is all well and fine. But I do want you to be bold enough and brave enough to state and to claim this is the breakthrough that I would, you, would ask for if I had one wish or a magic wand. Yes, money is a fast and easy one, and, and our societies put a lot of uh, energy around that. Staying motivated and consistent. Yep, that's absolutely fantastic one. The courage to follow your dream. Good Lord, I love that. Anyone else? Type it in. Let us know. Okay, perfect. So I want to give you uh, an example, and this is a brilliant, uh, actually been a client. Um, he did our core pro programs. I uh, ended up in a coaching relationship with him, and he is... Um, and, and he's become a friend of mine, frankly. And this was his note that he sent. 
Four weeks after attending Jay's event, The Gift, I was hosting my first ever multi-day training. Two weeks leading up to the course, as I created, I barely eat, spent my mornings puking in the toilets. I'm serious. I survived off from booster juice. The stress was the highest it ever been. Without Jay's support through the process, I don't know what would have happened. Finally, I went into the event, blew everyone's mind, supporting them to get massive results in their lives, and I generated $47,844.84, to be precise, for my business from that event. Thank you, Joshua Hayward. So what I want you to understand is when we're talking about a breakthrough, the truth is, you know, this breakthrough talks about money, but the real breakthrough was he finally stepped up and did what he said he was going to do. He faced himself and was the courageous human being that he really is and created a, the foundation for a business that he is still moving and shaking with as we speak in uh, this moment in time. So it doesn't matter what your breakthrough is. What I want you to understand is it's possible. And even if it's outside your frame of reference, even if you're worried about it, even if you're scared about it, it doesn't matter. You can do it. And I give you my word, we can support. So just to sort of measure yourself of if you are in the right spot. So if you're ready to start a new chapter in your life, if you're concerned that epic change may be in your future, if you're looking to dramatically increase your energy, if you want to improve the quality of your relationships, if you're someone who has a passion and a gift that you want to share with the world to scale that, you know, scale up your contribution, much like Joshua. If you're in that uncomfortable spot of knowing the answers, but are not truly applying them to your life. And by the way, a little sidebar to this, how many of you on the call here know what you should be doing, know the actions that are necessary, but you've just not been able to bring yourself to actually take the actions. So give me a yes or a hell yes, or that remark may resemble me. Just type it in so I get a sense of, of how many of you are in that spot. Because in my humble opinion, this spot right here, this is one of the most important and significant that we deal with serve and support people in the gift. Because the truth of the matter is simply this. You are smart, kind, brilliant, uh, impressive people. But there is this distance between knowing and being and doing. And how I'll often describe the gift is that we bridge the gap from the head of knowing to the heart of feeling and getting passionate and, and connected to it to our feet, which is getting ourselves moving. That's what we do and we do it really well. And how many of you are just ready to step out of the ordinary and to create extraordinary? And you know that damn well, it is time. If that holds true for you, then please give me a yes that applies on the right path for sure. Okay, beautiful. We're on, we're heading that way. Um, yes, 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 and yes, a whole bunch of yeses. Perfect. So let's talk about this for a brief moment. And I'm going to give you a bunch of tools, some overviews, some assignments tonight so that you can get moving and shaking and apply these concepts, tools, and ideas to your life now um, prior to engaging and participating in the gift. So here's one of the, the core, I'm going to call it formulas that I'm going to ask you to begin to view your life, your world, and of course, your results from this perspective. And we call it the results formula. And the results formula is one on the one hand, I'm going to say it's probably pretty simple. You're going to look at it and you're going to go, yeah, I get that. But the application of the results formula can change your life. Here's the premise in a nutshell, is that every single result in your life, so the results in your life that you are thrilled to death of and proud of. So for example, uh, if, you're, if you're willing to play and be bold here, get, type in some examples of results in your life that you are incredibly proud of. So I'll, I'll share one with you. Um, one of the things I am most incredibly proud of is my dear wife and I have been together for almost 30 years. We um, are heading towards our 20th wedding anniversary. So we courted for 10 years um, and we're heading to New York for a uh, romantic 20th anniversary. I'm really excited about that. So that's a result in my life that I'm very proud of. Give me some examples of what you might be proud of. Type it in and away we go. But here's the thing. All of our results, the results in our life that we're thrilled to death of and proud of, and the results in our life that we are not too keen on, that we judge, that we have negative energy on, that we wish were different, that, you know, all of those pieces, all of our results really boil down to three fundamentals. And the first fundamental is this, is our beliefs. Now, we're going to define beliefs as the thoughts and ideas that I hold about myself and the world around me that I accept to be a statement of fact. I'm going to say that again. They are the thoughts and ideas that I hold about myself and the world around me that I accept to be a statement of fact. So, for example, 
This could be, um, you might have a belief that says you're smart and that you can learn things easily. You might have a belief that says you're courageous. You might have a belief that says you're a fantastic husband or wife or son or daughter. Whatever it is, you've got beliefs that support you. And that is, of course, these little positive things here. But here's the honest goodness truth about all of us as human beings. And I want to be really clear about this. All of us as human beings, we also have, also have beliefs that limit us. And we would define that as any thought or idea that blocks or hinders us from creating and being what it is that we want. And just to be clear about this, those are those little nagging self-doubts. That is that self-talk that says, oh, it's too hard. Oh, I couldn't possibly. Oh, what's the matter with me? Oh, why did I screw that up? Oh, what the, you, you know, that voice. We, we've all heard that voice. Um, one of my favorite names for that voice, by the way, um, was <laughs> a dear friend of mine, Marina. In fact, I, I'm going to show you, share a little more of her story uh, later on in this, is that she calls it the itty bitty shitty committee. Because it doesn't matter what happens, they find a way to shit on it in some way, shape, or form. So that's what a belief is. Thought or idea I hold about myself or the world around me that I accept to be, to be a statement of fact. Now here's what occurs in our life and in our world. When we get enough beliefs along a similar topic or along a similar vein, we then begin to develop an attitude. And those attitudes, of course, come in two varieties primarily, and they aren't so different than our beliefs. They are, of course, positive and negative. Now what's interesting is that there's also another one that's growing which is apathy. It's like, ah, whatever. And I got to tell you, if any of you are experiencing apathy in your life, you must get your butt to the gift because this is a red flag. This is a warning sign. This is a three alarm fire that needs to be paid attention to because it's heading it in a tough spot, as clear as I can say it. Now, here's the reality of this. In terms of the results that we have in our life, there I said that there are three pieces. Our beliefs Thoughts and ideas we hold about ourselves and the world around us, that we accept the statement of fact. Those beliefs, when accumulated, determine our feelings, okay? Our, and that's the best way to think of attitudes, is that they are the feelings attached to a person, place, circumstance, or situation. They are feelings. And it is these two things combined that dictate the third part of this equation, which is, any well guesses, dun dun dun. Feel if you type, if you type in the correct answer, you will win a prize. But you gotta, you gotta type fast. Dun dun dun. It is behaviors. Yes. Now I want to be clear about this. Behaviors are those things that we actually do and those things that we don't do, but say we should or say we will. Now, these three pieces are the source of every result that you have in your life. Now, most people find it pretty easy to Take a look at the behaviors. Yeah, well, I just wasn't doing the right thing. I didn't make enough calls. I didn't have enough patience. I didn't have enough courage. I got a little discouraged, all the rest of it. We can see the behaviors. Now, the truth is, if you pay a little bit of attention, it's not that difficult to see people's attitude. <laughs> Sometimes we prefer that we didn't, but we do. I'll tell you the, the part that is more difficult is this, is identifying the beliefs. And it is, and you must understand this, it is the beliefs that determine the attitude, the behaviors. It is not the other way around. The beliefs determine it. So, if you really want to have some powerful influence upon your results, here's a hint. Let's not piss around too much at the behaviors or the attitudes. That will get us a little ways, but it's expensive, it's hard, it's not really sustainable. If you really want to make some epic change in one heck of a hurry, then what we want to do is focus on our beliefs. Now, here's the son of a gun about that, is our beliefs have all been learned. Now, we have learned them from our parents. We have learned them from media. We have learned them from religion. We have learned them from experience. We have learned them from our friends. We have learned them from our culture. We have learned them everywhere. But here's the thing, is that our beliefs come in a couple of different varieties, not just positive and negative, also conscious and less than conscious. And here's what research says, is that we are mainly conscious of about 10% of our beliefs. That's it, 10%. In fact, a gentleman named Chad Helmstetter wrote a book called Choices. He said that the most conscious human beings on planet Earth weren't 10% aware or 10% conscious. They were a grand total of 12%. So you, me, the many other people on the call, you know, we're probably sitting there like 25%, 30%, 35%. Yeah, we're, we're pretty sharp cookies, no? <laughs> so here's the thing. If you want to change your results, and I'm talking your income, 
quality of your relationships, your personal health, your positive talk, the quality of your parenting, your courageousness at work, whatever it happens to be. If you want to change that result, and how many of you have some results you want to change? So type it in, say, I have results I want to change. For sure, I have results I want to change. If you've got that, then that your area has to, for any sort of strategy, be focused upon your beliefs. Has to, has to, has to, has to, has to. So here's the thing, you have learned these things, but honest to goodness, if you're going to change them, we've got to start with awareness. Because if we only are aware of 10% of the beliefs, that means that approximately 90% of the beliefs is operating at a sub or an unconscious level, depending how big a fan of Jung you are. So what the hell are you going to do to change it? You have to have a tool, a process, and some awareness. Oh, my pen got a little bit crazy there. Um, you have to have a tool, a process, and some awareness about what those beliefs are so that you can make a choice. And I want you to understand, any belief, attitude, and behavior that you have had, and it doesn't matter how long you've had them, you have the power and capacity to relearn. And that's what the gift is all about. That is what we do. That is how we serve and support people. And that is how we transform people's results. Literally 40,000 people's results over the last 25 years. And they continue to refer us. They continue to show up. They continue to assist us. And it is, frankly, the reason how we are coming to Australia is... Uh, you know, Colleen Walters, who is the, the head honcho of Your Inspiration at Home, participated in courses years ago, actually actually worked with me and helped me open up the Vancouver market, what seems like 110 years ago. Um, and years later, still says this is one of the most powerful experiences of her life. She wants to bring it and share it and support, share it and assist her team in that process. So it works is the simple truth. So let's talk for a moment or two about human wiring. Um, there is a famous statement, in fact, I think uh, Anthony Robbins said it and uh, popularized it. I don't think that he invented it by any stretch of the imagination, which is human beings will do more to avoid pain than to pursue pleasure. Now, here's the honest God truth. That statement is true, but it's incomplete. And I'm going to give you the whole statement, is that human beings will do more to avoid pain than pursue pleasure if they're unconscious unconscious of their unique mission, unconscious of what their purpose is, unconscious of what their contribution is, unconscious of their capacity to create. If they are still being driven by our fear-based motivations, then guess what? The only thing that gets people to move is avoiding pain. Now we can put all kinds of fancy snazzy wrappers around it, but at the end of the day, it is What's going to hurt the least? What's going to cost the least? What's the greatest way I can mitigate my risk? How can I put myself out there but not actually really risk failing? And the honest God truth, and I need you to understand this, is your fear-based motivation has damaged your capacity to create and be free. And I want you just to really understand this, is that your fear-based motivation has damaged your capacity to create and be free. So quick example of that. How many of you have ever set a goal to lose weight? So if you ever set a goal to lose weight, just say, yes, I've done that. Okay. Yes, you have. A couple have. Yep. I get it. Okay. So it's pretty common. Most of us have done some version of trying to take care of our body. And by the way, it might not even be just losing weight. It might be just take care of our body, all the rest of it. But it's interesting that um, avoiding the pain of our current body size is more motivation than moving towards being healthy and strong, which is why most people uh, respond faster to the losing weight. But have you ever noticed that it is way easier to get to the goal weight than it is to maintain the goal weight? So if you ever had that experience, it's easier to get to the goal weight than to maintain it. Again, give me a yes. Yeah, we already have yeses now. <laughs> it's like yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we're not alone here. I want you to understand why that's true. Because what happens is that with fear-based motivation, is that we can only stay motivated while we are afraid or moving away from something. If I'm moving away from the extra weight, if I'm moving away from the judgment, if I'm moving away from the fact that I don't fit in my genes, if I'm moving away from that, if that's my motivation, the reality is once the fear is gone, meaning I've attained my goal weight. Once the fear is gone, we literally have no motivation because we don't know how to sustain our motivation in a state where we don't have pain and fear. And if you think about it and you, any of you struggle with inconsistency, this is the core of your inconsistency. So you can absolutely move. You can create all the rest of it when there's a fire lit under your butt. But in the absence of fire, most of us is like, oh, there's no fire 
I wonder what's on TV and the couch looks pretty comfy. Say hell yeah if you can relate. Okay. So here's the thing that I want you to recognize and understand. Your belief system. Your wiring as a human being is one of the most powerful tools for creation that exists, I believe, in the universe. But the honest God truth is you and the vast majority of human beings have never been taught how to use it properly. So we have this incredible resource, but it doesn't matter how many resources you have. If you don't know how to use the resources, they will never be enough. And I just so love this picture because it articulates, I think, exactly how most human beings operate, being motivated, motivated by fear by scarcity um, and lack, when the truth is they have inordinate resources at their fingertips. They've just never been taught how to use it. So give me a yes, that makes sense. If you're following along, you get what I'm talking about. Okay. So if we are going to be some of the rare, unique, free, conscious human beings on planet Earth, as opposed to, you know, if we look at this, this famous sculpture, which I so love, and I want to be very clear, this is how I see each of you. But this is how most of the world is, is trapped and battling. But this is your natural state. This is what you're really capable of. So for us to begin to really become conscious and clear, we must, first and foremost, accept the illusion. Okay? Now, sometimes when I say this, people get a little bit attached, but just hear me out, please. We've got to accept the illusion. And here's the illusion, which is this. Your perceptions of the world are not how the world is. Your perception of the world is not how the world is. And what that simply means is this, is that each of you have a set of filters and a way of framing and viewing the world that is unique. And it is unique based upon your, I'm going to say, BAB, which is beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors that we just covered. And please understand this. When I say it's unique, that does not mean that it is correct. That does not mean that it is incorrect. It's just the way you filter your world. Now, the less attached we get to our filters and our framing, the easier it is for us to heal our motivation structure. And, and the motivation structure, this is, you know, most people are motivated by fear are motivated by lack, are motivated, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, we're not going to just, that's really what's driving us, is if we can stop this and we understand that this is just the way we're seeing it, and one of the best ways to think about this, but in terms of the beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors, is that our beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors are nothing more than the distortion and deletion machines that we have developed to be right about our own beliefs. But if you begin to understand that it's just nothing more than a distortion and a deletion machine doing its job to keep us safe because we don't want to get hurt, we don't want things to go wrong, we don't want to be rejected, we don't want to experience pain, we don't want to die, we don't want to get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger, tiger, that's how all this stuff got encoded. And if we do that piece, then we have the capacity to begin to create financial freedom. Now, I want to be clear about this. Is that financial freedom, when I write it here, this is not about chasing of the almighty buck. I don't give a rat's ass about money in the big picture of the universe. What I'm really talking about here is I'm talking about when you become a conscious creator, the choices and the influence and the power to create what is important to you, money is a part of. So how are you going to handle money so that money doesn't handle you? And how many of you have just like are sick and tired and had it up to here or putting your foot in the, you know, putting your foot down and say, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life wrestling with money. I've had enough. That's it. I'm not going to do it. And if that's true, then you get what I'm talking about. And when all of those things are done, then we get really busy living our mission, moving towards being inspired by love, passion, contribution, and connection. And when we're inspired by that, man, everything changes. So that's the big picture of what we're talking about. So let's talk briefly about accepting the illusion. And I love this. I want to share it with you quickly. And I know, gang, we're moving fast. 
but uh, I want to make sure that we get done on time and all of those pieces. If you could just begin to understand that we are all fundamentally deaf and blind. Now, this little image here, I love this. So in the grand scheme of things, we're all pretty much deaf and blind. So the, this is the range of sound frequency that we are, by the way, currently aware of and can prove and demonstrate by with science. Okay, this is it. All of this from, let me get my thing going here, all the way from here. From here to here. This is known sound that we can prove with science, which by the way may not be complete, but it is significantly broader than what we can hear. So human beings can only hear within this range. Now let's be clear about this. Does that mean that this does not exist? Does it mean that this does not exist? Hell no, we know it exists. We can measure it, we can see it. There are tools and resources that make that possible. Now, that's just the hearing piece. I love this one. Now this is what can be seen in terms of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now this, just this little tiny band here, this is what we as human beings can perceive. So out of this whole entire area, from here to here, and this is just what we know exists, right? This is what we can prove exists. Our capacity as human beings is the grand sum total of this little area in here. And yet, as human beings, we are so sure that we know all of the answers. We are so sure we know what happens in the afterlife. We are so sure what is real and what is not. We are so sure about what exists and what doesn't exist. We are so sure about other people's motivations. We are so sure about so much. And the honest to God truth is that we are all pretty much deaf and blind, even from the perspective of proven science, let alone the capacity for our distortion and deletion machine to make things even more complex. Now, when you see this, how many people here have a have a little bit of a reaction going, holy doodles, I did not realize that it was that little that we can process and see as human beings. Anybody have, a, have any of that reaction? Okay. And let's also be clear about this. This is the scientifically proven spot of what we can process. And it doesn't even begin to describe our own misperceptions of what we can actually see. It's crazy. Completely crazy. So if we can just accept the illusion that all things are not necessarily what we think, all things are not necessarily what we see, and in fact the vast majority of existence in the universe we cannot even process, we're not equipped to. So I'm going to ask you to just type in the little window here when you can see the horse. So just say, yep, horse, or just type in horse so I know who can see the horse as opposed to just a yes or no because I got lots of yeses or noes and I don't know how to make sure that. Okay, great. So we accept the illusion. We're all fundamentally deaf and blind. That makes it easier to not have to fight. And that we are meaning makers. If we can just understand that our belief system's job is to make up meaning and we make up meaning all the time. But here's the thing. <laughs> And it, this sounds ironic, my friends, but it's true, is that when we can begin to just accept that, we don't know much. And if we don't know much, there's not so much need to fight about it. Um, because as meaning makers, we are usually wrong. Um, cause and effect is one of the most hilarious things in the universe. And we as human beings make up cause and effect. And there has been study after study after study after study after study, after study, after study that fundamentally the majority of the time. Human beings make erroneous relationships between cause and effect. But we still make up the story nonetheless. So the hint is here is to give up getting attached to the story. Because the truth is we can only see what fits in our context. You know, there's that famous saying that says, I'll believe it when I see it. More to the truth of this is you can't see it until you believe it because your distortion and deletion machine cuts it out. So we see what fits within our context. And by the way, for the purpose of context, I'm just again talking about, think of it like your beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. That forms the context or the container of what allows or fits in your life. And here's a little hint that I'd love for you to try on for size. Instead of being so sure about what's going on in your life, instead of being so sure about what you see and how people are behaving and what's going on and why your results are a particular way, you could try this little sentence on for size. Instead of making a comment as though it was a statement of fact, you can begin to use this phrase. Well, you know, the story I'm making up about this is. 
what it does is it causes you to own the fact that you are making up meaning and that you're not attached to it being right. You're not attached to it being wrong. You're just sharing what your perspective opinion and opinion is. And honest to goodness, my friends, it changes everything because we become unattached to our stories. So who's willing to try on for size, just using the phrase, the story I am making up about this is. And I want you to start trying it in your day-to-day conversations. You know, something happens, you're uh, trying to figure something out, you might even be in a debate, you might even be in a little bit of an argument with a loved one. And instead of going, I'm right and you're wrong, you just say, look, this is how I see it. And the story I'm making up about this is you don't care enough me- about me or you're not respecting me or you didn't do what I asked you to do or in some way you disrespected me or in some way you let me down. That's the story I'm making up about it. And you'll find it transforms everything. Now, here's the thing. When we accept that there is an illusion going on, the next task, if we're going to continue to wake up, is how are you going to discover your filters and framing? Because honest to goodness is that these stories that we make up, we don't make up by accident. We make it up very specifically based upon our own filters and our framing. But here's the thing. The issue here is we cannot see it from the inside. Okay, so it's a little bit like this. Imagine that you are in this great big box and this is you. And the truth is, you are trapped in this box. But the truth is, it's not hard to get out of the box. It's just that the instructions are written on the outside of the box, which you can't see because your orientation is inappropriate to read it. So it's exceptionally difficult to do on your own. And this is the power of transformation experiences like the gift. This is the power of a coach. This is the power of a process. Because what we do is we help you to do two things. Number one. Just get somebody here to read it. It's like, hey, here's how you do it. In your circumstance, this is what's going on. And we also provide exercises, activities, and processes for you to momentarily and symbolically get out of the box, to see the box and to recognize where the limitations are, what the filter is, what the framing is that may not be serving and supporting. Now, on this note, while we are inside the box, we always have an inordinate number of reasons why we can't. And just to be clear about this, we can't because there isn't a step ladder. We can't because we don't know what's on the outside of the box. We can't because nobody loves us or supports us enough to actually come and read it. We can't because, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. One of the key pieces of the gift and what we do with the Creator's Code is this, is we serve and support you to ban, eliminate, and um, reframe those old excuses and that negative self-talk. Now, here's a little bit of fun and entertainment. I'm going to ask each of you because (laughs) now I know that no one on the line here has ever made an excuse and certainly nobody has done it in the last couple of days. But if ever you were stuck for an excuse, we actually, you know, at the end of the course, because you're going to be excuse free, we do provide you with this tool in case you do desperately need an excuse because you'll no longer you know, have them within your, within your belief system. So you get to choose a lead in. And um, <laughs> I like this one particularly. You're never going to believe this because there's three parts to every excuse if that's not clear to you. So we'll give this to you in case you're ever stuck for an excuse. You're never going to believe this. Um, a man with six fingers on his right hand ate my homework. And you just get to pick any three. It's all well and fine. But we would hate to leave you, you know, totally excuseless and stuck, you know, having to do something that you didn't really want to do. Um, (laughs) Maybe some of the jokes are just for me. Um, But what I just need you to understand is this. You will begin to recognize your filters and your framing. You will begin to see your excuses and recognize in many cases how silly and ridiculous they are. And the truth of the matter is I would be I would wager if we just randomly picked you know, th- you know number three, number seven, number nine, and put them together, they are no more ridiculous than the last excuse you used to keep yourself small, to make yourself be off track, and to get yourself out of a bind or an obligation you didn't want to be in. All right, let's just keep going. That, that was obviously just a little bit of sarcastic humor. Now, the next step is this, is you've got to heal your motivation structure. Now, here's the reality of this is that most of us have learned to make it harder than it needs to be. And what that really boils down to is this. When we learn to make it harder than it needs to be, that we begin to value, let me get my pen here, is that 
it has to be hard to be good. Now, sh the terrible part about that is this, is that if it's easy, it does not count. And I want to be clear about this, gang, is that one of the greatest things that you will take out of the gift is this capacity to, number one, stop making things harder than they need to be and to embrace your gifts and what you can do super well, beautifully and easily and validate you and what you can create with joy. And by the way, what happens here is when we actually learn this is that we start moving towards the carrot. And by the way, this whole motivation structure moving towards instead of the stick transforms how we show up in the world. Because, please hear this, moving towards love, mission, contribution. This is the only truly sustainable motivation that exists on planet Earth. The stick is not sustainable. The stick costs us energy. The stick teaches us to only move when we are afraid of the stick. And even if we go and we get great results, meaning that we can go and, you know, build our business, make 100 cold calls, um, lose weight, even though we might be able to get the result, our feelings about it are always a little bit off. And who here, by the way, has ever had this experience where you work your butt off, you like you give it everything you've got, and you finally create the result that you say that you want to create. And when you land on that result, it just feels a little bit hollow and empty and not quite right. Just say yes if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, of course. Yes, you are not alone. This is human, my friends. It is very, very human. So here's the thing. So human, I, I, and it's just important to me. And this, by the way, gang, is why I keep doing this work. I've been at this for over 25 years, and it is vitally important, and it changes people's lives when we learn to get our motivation structure healed, and we are inspiring, moving towards positive meaning as opposed to away from fear, difficulty, lack, scarcity, disappointment, judgment, all of those pieces. And what you will find is this, is your weight, you'll hit the goal and you'll stay. Financial freedom, because you will not let anything less than that, because the unconsciousness of being financially stuck is a diminishing fear-based process. And you will also know without a doubt that you have arrived at a healed motivation structure when your self-care is consistent. Because here's what the reality is, is that the only way you stay consistent over time with your self-care is when it is done from the perspective of love, not self-hatred, not self-recrimination, not disappointment, not not good enough. Does that make sense to you? Give me a yes if you're with me and this is making good sense. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So let's just talk about motivation and why people participate and why people don't participate and what happens to our motivation in many cases. So I want to just, let's just share the, the pain scale, so to speak. So if we were to think about this in terms of human beings and their motivation is at zero, you know, so we're, we're right neutral, there's very little or manageable pain. 10 or minus 10, pardon me, is rock bottom and it is exceptionally painful and people are highly motivated here. So if any of you have had any experience with 12 step programs, um, any of those sorts of things, what they, they will often talk about is before you're going to succeed in the program, you have to hit rock bottom. There's nowhere down to go from here. And once you hit rock bottom, then we have an opportunity to work with you and we can help you be consistent. We can beat this addiction, but you got to hit that rock bottom first because it's a turning point. What they're really saying is for you to motivate yourself to beat this addiction, what has to happen, simply put, is this, is you have to make it as painful as it can possibly be and then a little bit more. 
And from there, then you have the proper motivation for the, for the program. Now, up here, plus 10 is a peak in all areas of life, full of love, joy, meaning, significance, contribution, connection, um, all of those pieces. Like, look at world, here we go. Now, here's what I need you to understand. Rock bottom um, is either highly motivated or given up. By the way, people get into AA and save themselves um, or go live on the street. Both happen. Minus five. Minus five is usually a pretty highly motivated individual. And they're a pretty highly motivated individual for this reason. Oh, let me get my pen back going here. Because at minus five, and this is going to sound a little bit goofy to you, but I want you to hear it. At minus five, they can actually see what rock bottom would look like, and they don't want that to happen. So they're highly motivated staying away from this because I don't want that to occur. Hell no. And they can begin to imagine what it would be like to be out of pain. What would it be like if I fit into my jeans again? What would it be like if I had enough money to pay for my mortgage? What would it be like if I didn't have to go to work every day? What would it be like? So they see it, please hear this, from this position, most people who are motivated are moving away from pain. But here's the reality, is that when they get here, most of the time their motivation begins to go. Now. The reality is this, most reasonably happy people, and I'm going to call reasonably happy as, as plus five, most reasonably happy people are highly unmotivated. And why are they highly unmotivated? I don't know if any of you have ever heard the phrase of, uh, you know, people who took pretty good care of themselves and then they found their loved one and they got married and five years later, they described themselves as fat and happy. <laughs> so... They put on the weight and they let one another slide because they're quite happy in that they found someone whom they deeply love and care about. And let's hope that they actually, you know, accept one another pretty much the way they are. But the fear and the pain of, oh my God, I'm not going to find the one looking like this and being a fat slob lying on my couch all day long, not doing anything to take care of myself or, or, or work in the world. That's what happens is people become reasonably happy and unmotivated. But I want you to understand. This area here, the I'm doing really, really well, I'm like an eight plus, this is the area where some of the most significant work happens. This is the area that most people, frankly, fail at because this area here, these last two, you know, getting from eight to 10, this takes, in my humble opinion, about 100 times more work than it does to get from rock bottom to zero. And I want to be clear about this because of what's motivating us, because of the refinements and the distinction. And I've had the blessing to coach a bunch of Olympic athletes, you know, people who their whole piece wasn't just on the top two, it was, it was on, you know, the best in the world. It's the top 0.5, getting from 9.5 to 10. And I can tell you what, they work more at that top 0.5 than most human beings work at all of this combined. So my point to this is I know that there are some of you who's like, well, you know what? I've got some stuff going on in my life that I need to fix. I've got to get my financial freedom handled. I've got to heal my relationship. I've got to take care of my body. And that's probably going to be somewhat motivating. If you're not really motivated at all and all those sort of things, I'm going to wager that you're probably in this area here. Or by the way, another alternative is you become apathetic, which is actually you're down here, but I've given up hope to actually do anything about it. But you know what? If you're on the call here and you're a rock star, and it's like, look, what I really need is some some refinement to to get the end pieces in place. Like I'm 90% the way there. I just need that last 10%. And by the way, a, like let me know and say that you're a last 10%er so I, so I understand if that's where you're at. Then I got to tell you that wherever you are in this process, the gift is going to serve and support you in epic ways. But particularly, please hear this, particularly if you are up in this area, you've got to get your butt to the gift because this is the spot where the danger zone is, hey, I'm looking pretty damn good. I'm head and shoulders above everyone else on my team. I'm rocking it and I'm rolling it. But this part here, honest to God, you cannot do yourself. There is an internal self-referencing loop that makes this virtually impossible to do on your own. All right, gang. Let's talk about financial freedom for a moment or two. 
This is often a measure of consciousness more than anything else, um, and it is 1,000 times easier to do after the first three steps are complete. And by the way, those three steps, if it's not already clear to you, it's exactly what we were talking about. Top of the list is this, except that there's an illusion. Discover your framing and your beliefs. And of course, the third part is heal your motivation structure. You get those three things done, and I will bet dollars to donuts that you can be financially free inside of 24 months. I'm serious. The very reason that most people are not financially free is that they can't and don't and have not handled the first three. Now, how many of you have a goal here of actually being financially free? You have a goal of being financially free? Let me know. Type it in. Yes. for Say financial freedom just so I'm on the same page because I got like 12 million yeses and I, be, I need to know what when one question stops and the other one comes up. Okay. So, there are three elements, and we are going to uh, address these three elements in the gift, and we are going to let you know uh, the steps in which you're going to deal with them. Now, here's the first step, and, and this is a big deal, and so few people do it. One of the reasons, again, because we don't have our needs met clean, clear ways, we're still busy moving away from all of those pieces, is that most people in the developed world do not choose a lifestyle. They don't choose a lifestyle at all. What most people do is this. They chase a lifestyle. And it is the very grounding and idea of chasing a lifestyle that causes them to be financially stuck and, well, I was going to say broke. Broke isn't the right phrase for it. Uh, being stuck on the treadmill of more, I need to earn more, more, I need to spend more, more, I need to get more, more, I need more. And that whole process from starter house to starter car to hell, starter wife for some people is what causes us tremendous difficulties. So in the gift, what we're going to do is we're going to equip you with the capacity to consciously choose your lifestyle. And I'm not going to spend much time on it here now, but I want you to understand that what we're talking about is in choosing your lifestyle. That's where you're going to live. That's how much money you're going to spend. That is how you're going to structure your education. That is everything. Are you going to own a house? Are you going to rent a house? Are you going to uh, drive a car that you own? Or are you going to get a, a new car every three years and lease it? I, like there, It is everything. You've got to choose your lifestyle. And when you choose your lifestyle, then what happens is all the advertising, all the keeping up with the Joneses, all of that bullshit evaporates. But you have to do the other three pieces first. The next piece here is once that is done, you've chosen it. Now we've got to focus on breaking the time for money bind. And what this simply means is this. We focus on how do we create and contribute value that is not tied to time. Now you have been conditioned, we have been conditioned, since society has been conditioned to trade time for money. And what that really boils down to is this, is you be a good little worker bee and don't have too great of expectations for you in your life and we'll pay you enough money that you get a taste of the good things at least two weeks out of the year. But for the most part, you're going to go and you're going to slog away and you're going to do what you're told. And uh, as long as we can keep you in debt, then you're going to be a little bit scared and that's going to be right in alignment with your motivation structure, by the way. So chop, chop, get to work. But when you begin to understand that people create financial freedom by contributing value, and you begin to organize your time, your energy, your resources, and your life around this process, it's one of the reasons, by the way, why I love the, the company, Your Inspiration at Home, is that it is a way to contribute and to create value and to be rewarded for it. Please hear this, even when you're not working, if you have a fantastic team, which of course brings us to the third element of financial freedom, which is to develop passive and recurring income. If you can develop passive and recurring income built on these two pieces, financial freedom is, please hear this, in most cases, grand total of 24 months away. It is not hard, it is not complex, and it is not even difficult. It takes a different way of being, it takes a different way of thinking, and it takes a different way of contributing value. And when those three pieces are in place, financial freedom is not a dream, it is a reality, and I have, number one, of course, done it myself. I have helped, un I can't count how many people I've assisted in that process. You can do this, and if you haven't done it yet, I want you to understand, it is not because you're incapable, it's not because it's impossible, it's not because you're, uh, you know, not worthy of it or not smart enough, it's any of the bullshit. It's for one reason, one reason only. You have not been taught 
how. And I give you my word, I'll teach you how. So then the big idea here is when those pieces are done, is that it is your task, it is your job, it is your process to live your mission. And I love this quote. I think it's one of the greatest ever. Always remember that you are braver than you believe, you are stronger than you seem, and you are smarter than you think. And I really believe that that is true about any human being who puts themselves on the journey of consciousness and personal evolution, which is what we do at the Creator's Code and with the gift. So we want for each of you to connect, to create, to contribute, and that is the process. So let me talk to you briefly about the gift. And um, and please understand, that's the big picture. If you have any questions from this point forward, you just ask the questions. I will answer them. You can type them in. You can raise your hand. I'm happy to unmute you. Um, Whatever is going to work best for you. So who attends the gifts? So please hear this. While in Australia, a, a vast majority of the people who are going to be there are going to be your inspiration at home uh, leaders and consultants and uh, associations and husbands and wives and all those pieces. That's all cool. But what I need you to know is that who attends the gift are people from all walks of life. They are men. They are women. They are, uh, you know, the gentleman on the right there is a lawyer. The gentleman on the left there is an oil rig worker. Um, what they all have in common is they want to evolve and grow in their business. Uh, this woman here, Andrea, I, I truly love her. She's a mom uh, of two children of her own and two um, uh, foster children who is dedicated to serving, supporting, and connecting with her family. And she defines all of her children as her family and comes, participates in the gift. She has done all kinds of work, uh, became actually even a creation circle leader with us, which meant she led, led masterminds. But they are people who have, I'm going to say, a heart and a social consciousness who are ready to shed the limitations of society. So please get this. All age ranges. Uh, This young lady here, when she participated in the program, was actually only 17, but her mom had graduated, had changed her life, and she was asking, how how can I do it? How can I participate? I want to do it. So even, uh, even younger kids can do it with the consent of their parents and all of those pieces. So it's literally every walk of life under the sun. And what I want you to understand is this, Uh, this lady here, Anzi, I love her. Uh, She's a doctor of of acupuncture and of, uh, there's something I'm missing. Uh, Anyway, brilliant woman. But what I want you to understand is that the people who attend the gift are people who stand for the best in one another, stand for the best in humanity, are willing to shed all the old stories to create what is most important in their lives, in their families, and in their communities. And if that's you, then you will love this process. Now, that's who participates. One of the things that I love about doing this work for the past 25 years is that um, I get to see people create what's most important in their lives over and over and over and over again. And these are just some examples. So dear friend of mine, um, he actually became a coaching client of mine, is that after, um, after a very successful real estate career, he decided he was going to pursue professional golf. At an age, by the way, when most would say it's impossible. But not only did he do it, but he won his, um, I think they call it his flight in the category of golf that he was uh, he was involved in. I got to watch him win that trophy on television. It was stunning. People have started families. Um, a dear friend of mine from Edmonton has opened an orphanage in Uganda because that was important for her. Written books on all topics that you can you can imagine, overcame depression. I cannot tell you how many people through this process have uh, overcome their depression, have gotten off of their medication, and have re-engaged in their lives. Um, I have a multitude of notes from people that says, this saved my marriage. Um, and I tease about meeting the one, is that, honest to goodness, in our courses and in our programs, I should have not charged for courses. I should have charged for dates and for marriages because the truth is uh, when people are in this evolutionary process, they're open, they're willing, they're attractive, they're being more authentic authentic to who they are. And time and again, they meet the one. So people have uh, set and enforced uh, boundaries. Many people who have lost over 100 pounds and even many more who have figured out how to get past the plateau and lose the final 10 stopped self-sabotage utterly and completely because those are just old outdated limiting beliefs started a band and been (laughs) i've obviously misspelled that and have been playing professionally i got a a beautiful note from a guy who uh who had said that he would have never dreamt that he could make a living doing what he loves which is playing music and uh and that's what he does now 
sailed around the world with a family, a Calgary family, sold everything that they had, bought a sailboat, traveled the world, um, not just uh, him and his wife, but him and his wife and his kids. They wanted his kids to see the world and understand what goes on. Healed broken families, uh, divorced and separated with dignity and respect. Because yes, we've saved marriages, but also sometimes it's just been done and it's been done for years. So how do you get out with respecting one another? How do you get out without having World War III? How do you get out without spending 100000 bucks on lawyers? And we've served and support families do that many times. Quit jobs they weren't aligned with, moved to Mexico to recharge, created financial freedom. So these are just some of the breakthroughs and the results that people have created. And I'm, I'd be curious for you. Like what would it be for you? So what are you excited about creating? If you were to come to, to take the gift, when you come and take the gift, what is it that you would want to create? And just type it in the little window. Like what? where would that breakthrough be most meaningful to you? Financial freedom, ideal physical body, creating connection and support with your team or with your family, your loved ones. Maybe it's just leaping into your own business and really putting your heart, mind, and soul into it. Maybe it's an amazing primary relationship, contribution to family and friends, commitment to lifelong dreams. Doesn't, whoa, jumped ahead there, sorry. Doesn't matter to me what it is, but it is important that you set the vision. All of the above. <laughs> I love people. So all of the above, I have financial freedom, okay, the others are, uh, to take care of my body, to lead my team consciously. Got it. Those are all great examples. So, and again, it doesn't matter to me what it is, but it does matter that you are clear, conscious, and committed. Those are big, big deals. All right. So, I'm going to, this is the last bit I'm going to tell you about, and then I'll give you, I'll share the information with you so you can get yourself registered in the gift if you are not already. Um, and by the way, we've had some people, um, is it limited to just one? Oh, definitely not. It is not just limited to one. Um, but one of the things that I ask people to do is to come to the course with a specific, definite objective or result that you want to create. And what happens is, and why that's important is that when we have that specific, definite objective, then the material, the exercise, the activities, and the processes, they have a framework or a structure within your life and your belief system to get processed. And when you have that, what happens is a multitude of other things will come to pass. But in the absence of having a specific definite purpose and aim, what occurs is that it's like, well, I'm not really sure. I haven't really committed. Well, I'm just kind of open to seeing what will happen. And what occurs is that there isn't a framework for your belief system to work the concepts, tools, and ideas to any meaningful outcome. And frankly, for most people, that's just not as valuable. So I always ask people to come with a specific goal, knowing that you can exceed that and you will exceed that so long as you're doing your work. Okay, here's the thing that I want to share with you super fast, and uh, this is the last part. This gentleman, his name is Alan Deutschman. He wrote, I think, one of the most significant books in the universe about human change and human behavior. It's called Change or Die. And um, the truth is, he followed a bunch of people who went through, yes, I know that's a disgusting picture. I am sorry, but I want you to get the point. He followed people that had double and triple bypass heart surgery. And what he was following them for was to see if they could actually make the lifestyle changes that the doctors, that the physio, that the, the therapists, all those sorts of things, asked them to after their, um, after their heart surgery. So here's the long and the short of it, is that most people were said most people told these words, change or die. And by the way, my father-in-law had exactly this experience. And after his surgery, he went for his little follow-up sessions. And here's what they told him. You need to stop eating salt. You need to stop eating fried food. And these are his words, not mine. Uh, and you need to move your fat ass. That's what he said. This is what they told me. So guess what? He did exactly those three things. But guess for how long? Now, he only did those three things for about 90 days, which by the way, is pretty normal. And the truth is most people, most people cannot sustain the change that will in this case save their life. That's the name of the book, Change or Die. So 90% of people inside of 90 days could not sustain the change. But Deutschman followed a different group of people. And this different group of people, they were engaged in a process of support even before their open heart surgery. They were told that they're not going to have the traditional little three sessions afterwards, that they're going to get assistance and they are going to be tracked in terms of that assistance. 
Now, they didn't have names for the three R's, which I'm about to share with you. They didn't have names for the three R's at the time. They just knew that they were going to put them into some communities. They were going to put them into some courses. They were going to help them uh, with, uh, you know, sort of handholding for lifestyle changes. They were going to do all of these pieces. Now, Deutschman went back and looked at the studies and said, wow, what a dramatic difference. But what was it exactly and how could that result be recreated? And he came up with, he called the three R's of real and lasting change. And here's the first R. It is reframing. Now, reframing is looking at changing how we see and what we believe, i.e., <laughs> i.e., do that again. Changing what we believe about a circumstance. So, for example, um, many of the people in that circumstance is that they changed uh, their view of their triple bypass or their heart attack that led to that and all those sorts of things as a wake up call for them to commit more clearly and consciously to their family, to finish the things that they always said that they wanted to do, to do all those sorts of things. They reframed it. Now, reframing isn't a one-time process. Refra reframing takes time. It is what we do stunningly well in the gift is we help people shift beliefs, which is exactly what reframing is. Now, here's the thing. That is not a one-time process because lots of people would wake up after the surgery and say, I commit to taking care of myself. I'm going to be there to walk my daughter down the aisle. And then 90 days later, they wouldn't actually make the changes that were necessary. Now, the next R for reframing, because these things work together, is to repeat. And I want to be super clear about this, is that the message has to be repeated literally hundreds of thousands of times, both explicitly and implicitly. What that means is we need to be told over and over again, changing your life, changing your lifestyle will save your life. Change your lifestyle will save your life. Eat more broccoli. Broccoli would be good. Stop eating fried food. Stop eating salads. You should go for a walk. You know, all those pieces. It has to be done explicitly, but also implicitly, which is if, for example, I'm out eating with my dear friends and, and uh, my community, and what I really want is a beer and a burger, but I sit beside my friend who also had triple bypass surgery, who's also working on trying to get her life changed, and she orders broccoli, I'm going to take a deep breath, and I'm going to say, yeah, make that too. And that's an implicit repetition of what the message is, and it is unbelievably important. And our world wants to think, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I heard it once, I read it once, I saw it on Oprah. I even made a suggestion to my friend, I totally know that but we don't know it and it has to be repeated over and over and over and over and over again to get the change in. And then the third and the single most important R is this, relate. And relate is participating in a community of like-minded people who are working on the same evolution and change. And that is what we do stunningly well in the gift. Now, in the previous study, 90% of the people failed to make a change or failed to sustain the change. However, when the three R's were in place, reframe, reframe, repeat, and relate. And by the way, of the three R's, he says that this one is the most important. And again, it's one of the things that we do stunningly well in the gift is this community, because the community, right, there we go, the community will, if it's the right community, let's be clear, repeat things over and over again, and the community will help us reframe happens implicitly if we're with the right community that's the key so guess what in this circumstance this little sweet spot where the three are in place this is what happens instead of a 90 percent failure rate people create a 78 percent success rate by the way not measured in 90 days measured over a span of three years and in fact, I want to be really clear about this, is that when people were surveyed, they were saying, so like, did, are, are you still doing okay with maintaining your, your, your health changes? And what people said is this, is that, you know what, that, that's not really the right question because it's not really a change. What has happened is this is who and how we are now. Now, I want you just to think about that. How many of you have been struggling to create change in your life? Just give me a yes if you've been struggling to create change. It seems like it's hard and it seems like it takes a lot of work. Yeah, of course. You're not alone. I totally get that. I, yes. Yes, I know. I so know. But how many of you would like to be able to respond in 18 to 24 months from now, respond instead of, oh, it's hard. How many would you like to say, well, no, 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 it's, it's not hard. I mean, this is just who and how I am now. This is who and how I am now. Just actually just say that to yourself. This is who and how I am now. Feels totally different, doesn't it? That's what 
the gift stands for. That's how we serve and support you to create that evolution. Now, here's the key piece to this. I need you to understand it. Is that for this to work, it is not a fast, uh, quick fix. It is not a drive-through uh, process of evolution. This is not something that you can just throw money at. The research is abundantly clear. For this result to occur, for this just who and how I am now, any wild guess is how long that takes. So here's what the research says. 18 to 24 months. Please hear this, what I'm about to say, of immersion. Not sticking my toe in the water, not driving by, not just reading a book, not thinking about it on Sundays when I have a little bit of free time when the kids are, are gone and I'm not working. 18 to 24 months of immersion. But when there's 18 to 24 months of immersion with one, two, and three, this is the kind of result that you can expect. It's just who and how I am now. So that's my invitation to you. That's what this means. That's what I want you to come do with me. Remember I told you about Marina. Um, I want to just read this to you very quickly and because um, I just love her. She's smart. And by the way, the testimonials that I share with you about this process, these are not testimonials where it's like the course is over now. Tell us how great we are. This is stuff that has come to me through Facebook. This is stuff that I get a random email from someone years later. And that's what this is. So Jay, I hope all is well in your world and that you and your lovely family are enjoying health and happiness. I want to let you know that things have just continued to take off in mind. You may know that I helped Cal develop Calgary's 10 year plan to end homelessness. Well, as a result of participating in that, I've been able to travel to the U S six times in the last year to research innovative and best practices around the issue. I'm meeting with the mayor of Victoria in two weeks, help advise his city's development of a 10-year plan. I was invited to sit on the advisory committee for the National Conference on Homelessness to be here in Calgary in 2009. And I've just been recruited to be the new VP of the Calgary Homeless Foundation. I'm making more than twice the amount of money I was just two years ago. I'm in the six digits, brother. Now, this is important, by the way, because she was a social worker that actually had to make payments for over a year to participate in our programs. And she did it because it was important. And now she's transformed not just her life, but the lives of literally hundreds and thousands of people who struggle with homelessness. And I feel like I'm in a position to now create large scale systemic change in Calgary. Last four months, an innovative program I started here in Calgary has successfully housed over 40 absolutely homeless and deeply impoverished families with private landlords. And we think we may be able to indeed end family homelessness within the next two years. I honestly believe that it's the learning that I did at the Creators Code and continue learning and application of the concepts of accountability, choice, authenticity, and courage that have provided the catalyst I needed to launch my own self into serving at a level that really allows me to live into my joy. Cheers, Marina. Now that's a really long note, but all of the pieces are important. There was a woman who was struggling. Here was a woman who had a big heart. Here was a woman that just needed support and structure. And when she got herself her mission and what she was moving towards, she's literally transformed the world. The, the right-hand man of the mayor of New York came to follow her around for two weeks to see how they could roll this out in New York. Influential and powerful beyond belief. Um, I love Joan. Um, not long ago, I re received an invitation to attend The Gift. I've done a lot of personal development work over the years, so I didn't think I'd learn much. But if I learned one thing, I'd be happy. It also gave me an opportunity to attend with my daughter and visit for a few days afterwards. Well, the gift was amazing. So worth five ninety seven. It is literally life-changing. I learned so many tools that my daughter and I practiced together over the next few days and still even today. My biggest learning was an expansiveness of life. Words create and money took on a whole the words create and money took on a whole new meaning and are now so expansive and therefore allow me so many possibilities that I never knew existed or I could have even dreamed of. I've since committed to another program with Jay that is just blowing me away. Joan Tess, a author and past minister of the United Church. So you know somebody who was a minister of the United Church has probably done some work, and it still was astounding for her. Um, one more, I feel personally very blessed to have uh, been helped and guided by Jay Fazette and Creators Code. Our company has accomplished more in the last three weeks while working with Jay than in the last three years by ourselves. He gives you the direction and provides you with an action plan. We're now excited for the future. Dr. Christian Turbide, he's a specialist here in Calgary, does stunning work. Um, so let me just tell you briefly what happens in the gift. So the gift is $597 uh, for the people who are your inspiration at home. We are doing a discount of a hundred bucks, uh, but you got to get your butt in quick and that's 497. So on Friday, we focus all day on awareness of how am I wired? What do I believe both consciously and subconsciously? What are my negative loops and how do I set up procrastination? And we introduce the 12 pillars of conscious creation and we set up some exercises and activities to forever release blame and self-sabotage and plant the seeds for clues to your life mission. 
Then after that, on Saturday, this is all framed around the most important and powerful tool in the consciousness area that will untangle you from the past, separates you from your story, it clears you of negative energy, it frees you to consciously create your future. And after Saturday's gift, you will no longer be able to BS yourself. You'll always ask the questions from a space of elevated consciousness that moves you forward instead of telling some old silly story. And then Sunday is all focused on what are you going to create? So we work on clarity of vision and we give you a ton of tactical and practical actions that release limiting beliefs, that gets your needs met in clear, clean ways, that creates momentum and energy to break free from the old patterns and to consciously create your life. So it will support you to build the support structures in your home, in your life, in your business to sustain yourself. So we, it does all of that and honestly gain a whole lot more. So if you're sitting there going, so I wonder what I should do. Let me make this super, super clear. You should take the damn course. Take advantage of the special offer. We have never been to Australia before. So juggle your life. Do what needs to be done. Uh, call in every favor in the universe. Get the in-laws to take care of the kids and get your butt to the course. Once you make that decision, then get online, do the pre-work and prepare. And one of the greatest things you can do under the sun is to bring a friend so you have support to create the change that you desire and deserve. So there are two ways you can do it. For those of you who are, this is for your inspiration at home, and I know that there are people on the line that aren't necessarily your inspiration at home, so just bear with me, gang, okay? So if you are a leader and you want to get the most astounding deal in the universe, here's what you can do. Everybody would get a digital copy of my book. You get uh, the Engaging in the Gift digital membership that has a ton of resources worth 500 bucks. Uh, you get the digital workbook and handouts of the course uh, so that you can keep track of this as well as a hypnosis audio that helps you live the 12 pillars. You get the Launch Your Business Strategy Sessions. These are one-hour coaching calls that I'm doing for 12 weeks. Now, just to be clear about this, we have just, we've just we already done four, but you get the recordings of them as well, and then you can uh, jump in and participate in the live ones whenever you like. And then you would get the gift at the $4.97 price point for uh, six people. So that's you plus five of your team. And if you do that process, what that boils down to is that the value is over almost 13,000 bucks and you can get it for $2,000. Now you can just, of course, pay that as the leader and choose the five people that are going to make the most significant influence and impact in your business and just bring them along. Or you can get them to split that cost and you would, you would have it for an incredibly inexpensive amount of money. So that is one of the ways in which you could participate. Now, if you're not in that leadership position, um, oh, by the way, there's a bonus, which I wanted to share with you. And that bonus is you would get a program that is called Clear, Complete, and Create. And I'm just going to write down the three C's. And the three C's are an incredibly powerful program that we will make sure that we add to this, uh, the engaging in the gift process. And that program on its own, by the way, used to sell directly for $1,497. So it's a $1,500 bonus on top of this. And by the way, everyone would get that program. It's three webinars. It's about creating space that is incredibly powerful. Now, if you need to do it on your own or you want to do it on your own, it's very simple. It's individual gift purchase. Individual gift purchase is what I'm trying to say. So you get all of those same pieces. You get the strategy sessions as well. You get the three-day transformational experience, which is regularly $597, which the value of that whole piece comes in at $22.18, and you can do that for $497. Screaming killer deal. And of course, we would give you that same bonus, which is the 3C, Clear, Complete, Create. Um, the webinar program. And that, of course, is a value of $14.97. So that is the offer. Now, are there any specific questions I can answer for you? And uh, while you're while you're asking, I'm just going to actually get you the links, and I will put the links in the little window here, so you can simply click and get her done and all of that fun stuff. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm just going to put the details up here for the gift. So we're in Perth on May 22nd to 24th, and we're at the Mount. Mounts Bay Waters Apartment Hotel. Um, then we're in Melbourne on May 29th to the 31st, where we're at the Holiday Inn at the Melbourne Airport. And then we're in Brisbane, June 12th to 14th. And that is literally the contract is being signed today. Um, they were just going back and forth, but I don't want to give you a bump steer until the contract is in my hot little hands. Um, let me get those links for you. Now, are there any questions about attending? Are there any questions about how that process works or any of those things? The first link that I'm going to give you, and I'm just putting it down in the little chat window, 
is the link for the gift individual purchase. That is for the 497. I should clarify as well that um, that this is Canadian dollars, so you're not going to have to worry about the U.S. Uh, exchange or any of those sorts of things. You can just click those buttons, get yourself registered, and away you go. Now, do any of you have? Um, and by the way, I'm just going to put these up in the little chat, other chat window as well. So this is sent to all. Do any of you have uh, upline that has already purchased the program and you just need to get your name in and get yourself uh, all hung out and registered there? And if that's the case, what I'm going to ask you to do is this. I'm just going to ask you to make sure that you email me. And uh, if you email me, I will make sure that that goes to Lance or Crystal or Margarita, one of our uh, brilliant team that makes uh, makes – uh, handles all the details to get you registered and, and all of those pieces. Anything I can answer at all, gang? All right, my friends. So here's the thing that I want you to consider. I know a three-day course can be a lot to juggle. You got to organize childcare. You got to get things handled with your family. You got to travel. You got to pay for a hotel. You got to do all of those things. I get it. But what I want you to truly and genuinely get is that the gift is one of the most powerful experiences that you will ever go through in your life. It will alter how you see yourself. It will alter how you participate in your relationships. It will alter how you bring yourself to your business and it will pay for itself a thousand times over and it will do so for the rest of your life. And time and again, I see people struggling, quite literally trying to move through life with square wheels. And time and again, I invite people. It's like, you know what? If you could just pause for a brief moment, we could put on some really fantastic round wheels that will cut your effort, that will cut your energy, and will speed up the creation of what you want in, our lot, in your life. And time and again, I hear people say, oh, no thanks. We're too busy. No thanks. I couldn't possibly. No thanks. It's inconvenient. No thanks. All the rest of it. And I watch people struggle. I watch people struggle over and over and over again. And I want to just be super clear about this. Your life is too precious to struggle. You are too amazing. You have too many gifts to waste your time pushing a cart with square wheels. Goodness gracious. Let us take a pause, reset, put the wheels on the cart, and make your life easy. All right, is there any other workbooks we need to bring to the gifts? Honest to goodness, when you come to the gift, bring paper, bring pens. We will have all of the handouts and all of those resources that you need while you are there. Um, bring comfortable clothes and just be ready to dive in and do your process. Nothing else you need at all. Are there any other questions, gang? All right, my friends. You're a quiet group. So either I answered all of your questions and you're clear about if this is for you or not, or I horrified and terrified you and you don't want to talk. Which is it? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> and by the way, uh, if you're from Saskatoon, the next course in Calgary is in June, and we can absolutely make sure that you get yourself all registered. Uh, what, when you click on that link and get yourself registered, you just pick the city that you want to be in and we'll take care of it from there. Okay. All right, my friends. So the last thing I want to say is this. Do not let the excuses of your life get in the way of this. If you are ready to step up, if you're ready for a new chapter, this is the way. Quite literally, I am doing something that I have never done before to come to Australia, which is leaving my family for two weeks. Um, I never leave for more than four days. Five, like the fifth travel day, I'm at home. So I am doing this because I really want to serve and support. And honest goodness, if I'm willing to be away from my family for two weeks, which I, again, have never done in a decade, that's how significant this is, then you can handle your challenges, you can get your support in, and you can reap the rewards of the gift coming to Australia. So on that note, I wish each of you love, joy, happiness, financial freedom, and contribution. And I look forward to serving and supporting you in whatever city you happen to be in. And uh, always say hello. If there's anything else, let me know. We will go from there. Have a fantastic night, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.